Could Oklahoma schools be required to display the Ten Commandments in each classroom? It would no doubt spark controversy and likely put the state at risk for more legal wranglings. But that, among other things, is what the state superintendent recommended today. And it all happened in front of a crowd of teachers, parents, and students demanding that the school board focus on education. Crowds of teachers, students, and parents showed up at Thursday's State Board of Education meeting again this month, mainly to pressure State Superintendent Ryan Walters to stop talks of indoctrination and ideology. Our students, families, and teachers experience violence every day in the form of neglect, in the form of manipulation, in the form of outright attacks by this administration. I know you're getting tired of hearing me say that the rhetoric is upsetting, but it, studies show that you know, angry, harsh words create violent behavior. Walter's supporters spoke as well, thanking him for focusing on morality. The girls are walking around with their butt cheeks hanging out. This is public education. We are supposed to have standards. We After public comment, Walters announced recommendations from a group called the Oklahoma Advisory Council on Founding Principles, including requiring a minute of silence every morning in school to reflect, meditate, or pray. This shall be a full minute and not only the commonly referred to moment. Each classroom would be required to display a copy of the Ten Commandments and a Western Civilization course would be required for graduation. Walters added the 1962 Supreme Court decision that prayer in school is unconstitutional was wrong. Atheism is now the de facto and sponsored religion and it is indefensible in a place like Oklahoma that we would allow this to happen teacher stood up and led the class in a Muslim prayer, or instead of addressing Father God, addressed Mother Goddess. You would not be happy. A moment of silence is already required. Walters said he would look into how other requirements would be implemented. According to a list from the Tulsa World, the newly formed advisory council is made up largely of conservative and Christian Oklahomans and pastors, as well as one advocate for Muslim Oklahomans.